Can you talk about what is the idea of secession? What are the odds that it might happen? What does it mean for the United States uh, in some way for different states to secede? Sure. America has been one country with several cultures since the beginning. Um, there's absolutely no reason for someone, this goes back to the anarchist idea, if you despise Donald Trump, which is your prerogative, if you think Joe Biden is a clown, which is your prerogative, there's absolutely no reason for you to be governed by someone you disapprove of. This is an incoherent, nonsensical concept. The only reason we even take it as a hypothesis is that we're trained to the contrary since kindergarten. Um, a secession, I don't know well, along what lines, but in increasingly it's becoming harder and harder for people to have conversations. I think social media, and this is something people despise social media for. I think this is something that social media has done well, which I'm advocating for, is it tends to kind of run through ideas through like an evolutionary process and drive them to the logical conclusion. Uh, so it's very hard to be a moderate online because there's going to be people you know, pushing through your ideas through several cycles, and then you're going to end up at some kind of more pure, or if you want to dislike it, extreme perspective. Having these different pockets it's not really governable because people fundamentally have different worldviews. So I don't know what secession would look like. I think the number is really uh, ex increasing an exponential rate. Um, I do not the think- The number of supporters. Uh, supporters. Uh, I think the claim that this can only be accomplished through violence is false. It's a lie. Uh, just like any divorce doesn't have to involve beating your ex-husband or ex-wife. So- and I, I, I'm very much looking forward to this becoming a uh, reality far quicker than I ever expected. Well, do you think there's a value of um, competing worldviews being forced to be in the same yes, space? Yes, within a context. So we can agree if group one thinks A, B, and C are the fundamental aspects of their worldview and argue within that, and world group two thinks D, E, and F and argues in that. So you're gonna have a lot of argument within those space. But if there's fundamental differences in worldview, there's no reason to be, especially when each views the other as completely incoherent and unreasonable. Do you think there's a line of fundamentally different worldviews that uh, along which a secession will happen in the United States? Like, is there something that emerges to you as a set of ideas that are like, um, what do you call that? Like, you can't come to, uh, you can't come to an agreement over. I, yeah, I think this is already happening. Like with the masks, um, I think there's just two fundamental perspective and each one thinks the other is insane and also deadly and destructive. And I don't see how there's any, um, discourse on this topic. So on the left, masks. I wouldn't say it's left versus right. I think it's people who are pro yeah. risk versus people who are risk averse. Yeah, so risk averse, and then there's like a uh, a hope for the comfort of the sort of uh, centralized right. science uh, giving the, the truth and then everybody must follow the truth. Right of uh, the proper way to behave. And then there's, uh, on the other side, a distrust of any kind of centralized institutions of anybody who might uh, use uh, like control to try to gain greater and greater power and masks are a symbol of that. And Even if masks are or are not a, yeah. a, 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 a yeah, effective way of, uh, of stopping the virus, which is really unfortunate to me as a from a perspective. I happen to be on a survey paper about masks. Like people don't seem to care about the data or the so on. Correct. This this is this has become just a nice point on which to then highlight the difference between uh the two the two sides. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, I <laughs> It's it sounds kind of on the face, kind of ridiculous that the secession would occur over masks. It wouldn't, I, but I'm saying but, this yeah. is an example of something where there's a clean break. Yes, um, and and risk averse versus you know uh, s someone who's risk seeking. These are just two fundamentally different perspectives. Do you want to have an NHS or do you have a, one of a market based healthcare system? I, you can make very valid arguments for both. There's no reason for everyone to be under one. But do you you think that's not something that's that you think that's irreconcilable, if that's the word, yeah. uh, that 
that's not in the space of ideas that you can have in the same room together and they fight at each other and ultimately make progress. Like they, that secession is the more effective way to proceed forward. Yes. Well, I, I, <laughs> uh, do you see a possible world where no is the answer? <laughs> Meaning, uh, I know you say yes, because you kind of lean on the side of freedom and anar anarchism. Yes. Like you make, you want to make, let me make an argument in terms of divorce, which is in your worldview or your intuition is you want to make secession as frictionless as possible. Like of course. along all lines, not just like states or whatever, just like Absolutely. you want to choose, you want to be free. Yeah, and peaceful. But let me make my authoritarian uh, Russian- Okay, Papa Stalin. Papa Stalin argument in terms of relationships, like when, shit goes wrong in a relationship. Watch your language. <laughs> okay, there's only a place for one Stalin at this table, <laughs> okay? Okay, I'll get you, to be Lenin. You, you, no, <laughs> you get to be like Merkel as our previous okay. discussion with yeah. Putin, okay? Don't let me unleash the hounds. Uh, it, you know, s you wanna work through some of the troubles before you get divorced. Like you wanna do the work in relationships sometimes. Like it goes up and down. It's like, been 200 plus years. It's uh, it's done. But in the, listen, okay, so it's not a one night stand, but you know. Look uh, at Trump, this, I don't see the middle ground. He's either a complete calamity buffoon or he's been the first great president we've had in like many, many years. So you think that there's something different now than it was 20 years ago? Yes, social media and access to information. And the division will only increase, you think? Oh, yes. So Trump is not an accident of history. So it's they thought Trump was the river, but he was the dam. Trump was the dam. They thought he was the river. So in that analogy, Trump being gone makes things worse. Yes, for their perspective, because now things are really gonna hit the fan. So what are the odds of secession? I don't know. And my desperate hope is that it's peaceful. But so I think the, the number of people who are becoming very comfortable with the violence is making me very unsettled. Well, I see words as violence and your Twitter. <laughs> it's like Hiroshima <laughs> times a million. Uh, sometimes I curl up in the corner crying after I check your Twitter feed. So, <laughs> but you, in, uh, in all seriousness, you, um, you think it's possible to do nonviolent secession? It's a good Czechoslovakia. Look at Brexit. Brexit was the secession. Right. Right, so you can have... Uh... Civil war did not need to be fought. That would have been a, a nonviolent secession. And and if you worry about slavery, you could have bought off all the slaves, import them to the North. It still would have been cheaper and less loss of life and probably better for race relations. Yeah, I don't know enough history to to wonder about like how the Civil War could have been avoided. Well, that's how. Is, uh, well conversation so like no no if they want to secede say look here's what we're going to do we're going to let you secede but you have to end up slave you have to end slavery they seceded because of slavery here's the other thing there's like this some circles of conservatism have this myth that oh it wasn't about slavery it was about states rights well if you go back every state when they seceded released the press release and they said explicitly we're doing this because of slavery so that is an abomination that needs to be taken care of but the way the other countries have you know, ended slavery peacefully. One of the ways to do it is pay them by all, and we end up doing this after the war. I think the South people got um, reparations, the slave owners, it was just insane. Bring them North, you wanna go to Canada, whatever, and you agree and that's our peace treaty. Because the people who died weren't the slave owners, it was white trash. And it, it was, that's who always, and I hate that that's the term, I can't think of a better one, but that's who always ends up fighting these wars often, disproportionately. It's poor people and uneducated people. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, I don't, I did not regard them as cannon fodder. I think it's horrible. So what would it look like? There would be two founding documents? Yeah, they had their, they had their constitution. Which I don't know the history of that. Yeah, they had a constitution, but it was much more decentralized. If secession doesn't happen. Yeah. You said that Donald Trump was the dam, not the river. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like Walt Whitman or something. You should, it's poetry, okay. okay. Are uh, you flirting with me? 
<laughs> I don't. I, uh, we, you, you know us. We don't. We don't flirt. We just <laughs> go to town, cl- club, <laughs> and drag you to we, the. It's just the hammer. The and, we hammer and stickle. <laughs> And you don't want to know about the sickle. It's not good cop, bad cop. It's bad cop for a cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think 2024 looks like uh, in terms of the candidates? It's going to be Kamala Harris as the Democratic candidate. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Ted Cruz versus Mike Pence because they're both very good at debate. Um, that would be interesting to see how they differentiate themselves. But honestly, I don't, I mean, things are going to get really ugly really soon. What about Donald Trump coming back? He's not going to do it. Um, So things, in my opinion, I think things are going to be really, really crazy in 2021. And talk uh, talking about the dam being gone. like 2021, so this year coming up? Oh yeah, it's going to be complete, uh, it's going to be complete mayhem. What do you think, uh, like prediction wise, and this is empirical, what do you think Donald Trump's Twitter feed looks like in 2021, like if we're at the end of 2021, we'll look back and see like, what was the, you know, Obama gate exclamation points or we won. Uh, you know. He is going to be for the first time in history, holding the Republican party accountable to the, the base. We've never had that happen before. I, uh, I think he's going to be holding their feet to the fire, uh, radicalizing them. Uh, and given that they have the Senate where it's going to be 50-50. The Democrats have a three-seat majority in the House. This is not a governing coalition for either. Um, it's going to be complete mayhem. What does that actually look like? So like, what are the key values you think that he's he's going to try to push? Um, I think it's just going to be very contrarian. It's, he's going to be holding them accountable in terms of budgeting, even though he never did that as president. Right. Uh, I think in terms of some kind of nominations. Here's the thing. This is the first time since... Um, uh, like Nixon, uh, 50 years, and things weren't as politicized then, where an incoming president doesn't have control of the Senate. The Senate has the vote over cabinet positions. I do not see a possibility of them not trying to pick a fight on one or two of these nominations. And that's going to, and especially as revenge for Kavanaugh, this is going to get very bloody very quickly. And I think Mitch McConnell, there's a sadistic side to him. He revels in being the brakes on the car. Uh, and I think the base, it's just going to be throwing just, they're going to want some bone. It's like, oh yeah, we we eliminated this one person. So that's going to get really ugly really quickly. You see it being quite divisive, like oh, a yeah. division increasing, not stabilizing or decreasing. I, I, and I'll be doing my part. I know you'll be doing my part, but I'm trying to do my part and like trying to be, like to me, the division is uh, shouting over uh, people like Elon Musk, uh, people who are actually building stuff and like accomplishing things in this world in terms of like- Elon said he took the red pill. No, see, you're talking about the play. I'm talking about, forget Elon, uh, SpaceX and Tesla, and uh, actually the good sides of like some of the things that Google is doing, uh, like actually building things like making the world's information searchable, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Like all the stuff, you know, the making actually the world a better, uh, place. There's a bunch of technologies that are increasing our quality of life. All sure. this, all that kind of stuff. I feel like they get like not much credit, or in our public discourse, because of the division. The division is just like, like people. It's clouding our ability to concentrate on what's awesome about this world. Well, you know what would eliminate the division, right? Secession. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't. I. It's hard for me to disagree. It's it's hard for me to disagree, because but at the same time, secession. Um, I'm I'm a romantic at heart, and you to be divorced a, breaks my heart. Cool, but do you want to live in a country? <laughs> cool story, bro. Yeah, but do you want to live in a country where Joe Rogan is regarded as an example of someone who's spreading white supremacy? I don't. Well, but see, I feel like that's not the country we live in. That's just uh, the New York Times did it. The cathedral does it on a regular basis. Well, the cathedral is okay. the The ca- cathedral, I guess, you can maybe define the cathedral, but it's it's like the centralized institutions that have like a story that they're trying to sell and so yeah, on. Yeah, this is Moldbuck's concept, but yeah, they basically are set the limits of permissible discourse and create a narrative for the population to follow. But to me, that's a minority of people. 
Yeah, minorities just, always controlling everything in any country. The vast majority of the masses have no thought. Yeah, but minorities can be overthrown. And the, sure, the, the circulation of the elites. Yeah, the way the pro, no, 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 and that's what well, the what progress looks like is ridiculous. People take power. Yes, and then uh, they get annoying, and new ridiculous people that are a little bit better overthrow the previous. No, I think people. progress happens despite the people who are in power, not because of them. Right, and so why is the secession? So is is it always about overthrowing the powerful? Is that how progress happens? No, I think progress happens despite the powerful. The powerful are gonna do what's in their power to maintain their power and they're gonna fight innovation because it's a threat to their control. There's always gonna be the New York Times of the world, right? There's always gonna be those, those sure, people that have Sure, let them inherited. have their own country. So it's, it's two countries. One has Joe Rogan, the other one has the New York Times. Yeah, that's basically what's happening right now. It just geographically doesn't map out very well, but culturally, yes. But that's just cultural stuff. Like there's a layer of public discourse. Okay. I don't mean like that's what we're operating under now, but there's actual like progress being made, like roads being built, uh, hospitals being run, all those kinds of things, like the, sure. the, the different innovations. That seems like secession is counterproductive to that. Right, because one country would have all the roads and the other would have all the hospitals. That's, that's a great point. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not the point I'm trying to make. It's just like, <laughs> it just feels like the division that we're experiencing in the space of ideas could be constructive and productive for, for building better roads and better hospitals as opposed to like using that division to separate the countries. They're all going to have to solve the same problems, it feels like. Like, sure, but they can solve them differently and compete that way. Mass is a great example. Mass. Yeah, we're we're seeing that right now. Different countries have different mass mandates and things like this. And uh, the co competition within the same structure, within the same founding documents and same institutions, is not effective. You think is as effective it, as separating? It is effective, but there is a certain point which I think we have long passed, where there is not a consensus, a governing consensus, ideologically or culturally. Yeah.